Well, if you want to argue who's better, everybody can weigh in and make their case and all of that. But you might be interested in what certain people had to say about that, if it's a debate or not, and, and who they think is the best. And for more on that, let's go to the field and check in with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Well, Al, there are 20 living quarterbacks in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and we pulled every single one of them and asked, if you had to pick Peyton Manning or Tom Brady to quarterback your team, who would you choose and why? Well, they were all clearly conflicted about picking one future Hall of Famer over another. As Steve Young told me, we're talking Rembrandt and Van Gogh. There's no way I choose. So, there were four abstentions. 13 and a half voted for Manning, two and a half for Brady. Terry Bradshaw and John Elway went with Brady because of the rings. His three Super Bowl titles to Manning's one. The case for Manning, Troy Aikman told me, nobody does more at the quarterback position and has more to do with his team's success than Manning. And Dan Fouts thought that what Manning has done in that style of offense has revolutionized the game. Oh, and I'll ask for that half vote. That came from Joe Montana. He said he started Brady in the first half, Montana playing the role of Switzerland, you should have held his feet to the fire and said, okay, who starts in overtime? I wish he'd have been in Switzerland when I played him in the Super Bowl. <laughs> He's Steven Gustowski to kick off. New England won the toss, and they've elected to defer. So Indianapolis is going to get the ball. Bill Belichick, 10th season as the New England coach. Jim Caldwell, the rookie head coach for the Colts. Crowd rises as one at Lucas Oil Stadium, and away we go. Gostowski's kick is fielded by Chad Simpson from the goal line. Simpson will be taken down at the 23-yard line. Manning and company going to work, and let's take a look at the Indy starters. Peyton Manning, University of Tennessee. Joseph Badai, Louisiana State. Reggie Wayne, the U. Pierre Garçon, Mountaineer. Dallas Clark, University of Iowa. John Robinson, Missouri Western State University. Charlie Johnson, Oklahoma State. Ryan Lilja, Kansas State. Jeff Saturday, North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Kyle Devan, Oregon State University. Brian Deem, Northern Illinois. Peyton Manning making his 185th consecutive start. Started his first game as a rookie and hasn't missed a start since. Ball at the 23-yard line. And they start with a run. And Joseph Adai takes it up to the 27-yard line. For Manning, he was the MVP of the league last year. But in a way, he's kind of where Brady was at this time last year. Remember, he had the bursa sack problem, didn't play in preseason. It took him a while to get started. He was very mediocre through the first seven weeks. The team was 3-4. and four, And then blazing hot down the stretch to finish 9-0. Second down and six. Manning in the pocket, protected well, but the pass is a short one for a minimal gain. Gian Robinson makes the catch. Let's take a look at the Patriots starters. Mike Wright, Cincinnati. Vince Wilford, University of Miami. Derek Burgess, Ole Miss. Gary Guyton, Georgia Tech. Gerard Mayo, Tennessee. Tully Batikane. University of California. Jonathan Wilhite, Auburn. Brandon Merriweather, proud father of Morgan Merriweather. Brandon McGowan, the U of Maine. Lee Bodden, Duquesne University. Darius Butler, UConn. As if to give us time to introduce the defense, Indianapolis went into a rare huddle. Third down and six. Manning throws over the middle and the pass is incomplete and it will be a three and out on the pass intended for Pierre Garçon. Gary Guyton in on the coverage and you took a look at that New England defense among others tonight they're missing Ty Warren who was a late scratch because of an ankle injury. Uh, you're going to see Garçon come out and around here on the inside. This is a bit of a matchup. They played three different coverages on all three snaps there. So the game has already started with Bill Belichick and Peyton Manning. Pat McAfee is the rookie punter drafted in the seventh round out of West Virginia. And it's a good booming kick. Welker backs up. West from his 18 yard line brings it back up to the 31 yard line. And let's take a look at the New England starters. Tom Brady, Michigan. Lawrence Marone, Normandy High School. Randy Moss, 
Rand University. Plus Welker, Texas Tech. Benjamin Watson, Georgia. Chris Baker, Michigan State. Sebastian Ballmer, University of Houston. Logan Mankins, Fresno State. Dan Connell, Southeast Missouri. Stephen Neal, Cal State Bakers. Nick Kazer, University of Toledo. You saw Ballmer starting for the injured Matt Light, who got hurt in Denver a month ago. Dan Coven will start at center. He was shaken last week. But he is in the lineup. And the crowd now in full war as the pass is caught on the outside by Moss to the 36 yard line. He's tackled by the rookie Jacob Lacey. For Tom Brady, first quarter, first game last year, Bernard Pollard of Kansas City rolls into his knee. And the next thing you know, he's on an operating table. And the Patriots, not happy that he had his surgery on the West Coast. And he had a staph infection to boot after that. But Tom told us last night he feels great. He said the only thing, the last thing to have come back for him is his energy level. Everything else structurally and physically, he said, feels terrific. Second and four. And it's Maroney picking up a couple. Third and short as we take a look at the Colt defensive starters. Robert Mathis, Eastside, Magnet High School. Antonio Johnson, Mississippi State. Daniel Muir, Kent State. Dwight Freeney, Syracuse. Philip Wheeler, Georgia Tech. Gary Brackett, the Auburn. Clint Session, Pittsburgh. Jacob Lacey, Naming Forest High School. Melvin Bullock, Naming Forest High School. Antoine Mathieu, the real HU, the Mecca, Howard University. Gerard Powers, Auburn. Two rookie corners. Colts have had more than their share of injuries on defense, and yet these two teams are 1-2 and fewest points allowed this season. And that pass is incomplete. Jamie Silva covering on the play. Benjamin Watson was the intended receiver. And so each team starts with a three and out. Well, anytime you don't see help on Dwight Freeney coming off the edge here, you know Tom Brady is going to get that thing out of there in a hurry. So almost a tip-off from the start. You don't see help on Freeney, you know it's going to be about a two-second throw by Tom Brady. Chris Hansen is the punter, and T.J. Rushing is back for the Colts. Rushing, gets under it, and falls for a fair catch at the 10-yard line. So a three and a half for each side. Indianapolis and New England from Indiana. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. By Audi, Truth in Engineering. By Sprint, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. And by Coors Light, when the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. Some scenes from this great rivalry, which really, of course, got, got heated up after Tom Brady uh, became the starting quarterback in New England. Drew Bledsoe had started the decade. And then Brady comes on in 2001, guides them to the Super Bowl. Manning, of course, has been here throughout. He was the number one overall pick in the draft in 1998. Will start from the 10-yard line. And off the play fake. Dallas Clark makes his 61st catch of the season. After the 36-yard line on a first down, he breaks out of a Brandon McGowan tackle, a 25-yard game. Well, Rodney Harrison probably is not going to like this one very much. Anytime you give Dallas Clark a free release, you are asking for trouble down the middle of the field. That has been the game plan of the Patriots in past years. Hit him and hit him again. That time they missed. From the 35 now. Against the New England defense that what else is new will show Manning every look in the books tonight. And they hand the ball off to a die. You look at Bill Belichick and Chris. One thing he's had to do is, is mix and match. Five regular starters from last season are gone. Ty Warren is gone tonight with an ankle injury. Jarvis Green was already hurt. And, of course, at the beginning of the season, they sent Richard Seymour to Oakland. Well, the good news, though, is they're playing the Colts tonight. So, basically, they've been playing a nickel with only two down linemen in the game, that being Vince Wilfork and Mike Wright, both essentially nose tackles. 
can't miss easy either as Manning goes back and that catch is made and that is Pierre Garçon getting position. He got in front of Lee Barton who has come over to the Colts after several years in Cleveland and then last year in Detroit and was able to reach back toward Manning and make the grab first down. One of the things we talked to Peyton Manning about was the idea that he knew they were going to take away Reggie Wayne knew they were going to try and take away Dallas Clark. He really felt like the Pierre Garcon may be positioned to have a big night. From the 49 yard line. Manning deep down the left side and making the catch and staying in. At the 27 is Reggie Wayne. Merriweather and Wilhite were right there. Wilhite with the coverage and Merriweather coming over for safety help, but it's good for 25 on a great grab by number 87. Jonathan Wilhite has to be thinking, are you kidding me? How can I have better coverage than that? And Peyton went up and quick snapped it. And there's a whistle. And there's also, I think, going to be a challenge before. He could snap it. Belichick was right there. Scott Green was the referee. is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a completed pass. But one thing that no huddle does is it doesn't allow you to talk to the guys upstairs, the assistant coaches. You just have to make the call pretty much on your own. We think the ruling on the field is going to be upheld. Reggie Wayne getting both feet in, and in effect, you'll see it might even be three feet in. Because there's one, he drags the right foot as he has control right there. Two, and then just for good measure, that foot is also, we think, in. That It won't matter, though, because what Scott Green is going to see is that angle and this one as well. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver. Charged with a timeout. First down, Indianapolis. And again, Chris, that's one of those things where normally, if they ran a normal offense, normal pacing, the assistant coaches upstairs could take a look at it. That challenge had to be made on the sideline by Belichick, you know, by the seat of his pants. Because Peyton Manning got him to the line of scrimmage and quick snapped the ball, he forced his hand. Able. First down, 26 yard line. This drive began. With the Indianapolis 10. And it fires over the middle. And that's going to be good for another first down to Dallas Clark. He's covered by the rookie safety out of Oregon, Pat Chung. First down, Colts. Little pressure here, and Derek Burgess gets pressure around the corner as well. Bill Belichick telling us last night, you cannot pressure Peyton Manning. You can't blitz him and be successful. And Peyton just confirmed what Bill Belichick thought. From the New England 14 yard line. Inside handoff goes to a die. Indianapolis does really not have a running game to speak of. Right now, 3.7 is the team average. And for a die, who was a first round pick back in 06, his average this season, 3.4. League average is always. 4.04.1. My goodness, Vince Wilfork just took Jeff Saturday and just planted him on the seat of his pants and just blew him right into Joseph Adai. Wow. Wilfork at 6'2 and 325. Saturday gives away about 35 pounds. Second and 11. Good pocket for Manning. Has time. And that pass is a little high and incomplete. Pierre Garçon was the intended receiver and Baden covering on the plate will be third down and 11. Well, they're doubling the inside receivers now. Bill Belichick is down here in the red zone. And Pierre Garçon on the outside has man coverage. He has to be able to win this battle. They're basically giving him an opportunity. They're doubling Reggie Wayne right here. But they're singling up on the outside. And that's one he just has to win. He won it earlier in the drive, but not that time. Third down and 11. They bunched three receivers to the right. Clark is to the left. Manning will set up a screen. Caught by a die. Inside the five. Touchdown, Colts. Look right, look left, settled underneath. And they go 90 yards in eight plays to take the lead. Well, Peyton is just going to fake a screen out to the right, 
and then come back across as Joseph Adai works back underneath. Beautifully blocked, and I tell you, for the Colts, that's what works when these receivers get down the field and get some blocks. That time, Dallas Clark with the difference maker. They ran it twice for three yards. They have some indoor fireworks here. Oh, don't get me started on, on fireworks in, in indoor stadiums. Matt Stover for the extra point. That's good. And the Colts offense is on fire as well. 8-19 remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 in Indianapolis. Good way to enhance the experience of Sunday night football. 7-0 is the score. And the kickoff is taken a yard into the end zone by Matthew Slater. Comes up to the 27-yard line. So now that Indy defense will come out. Chris talking about if there's one key to the game, it's the pressure that the defensive ends can put on. And that is the key to a lot of games against the Colts. Can Freeney and Mathis bring the heat? And very often they do. Meanwhile, Tony Banta Kane is down. So the Patriot defense already minus Ty Warren a late scratch. And now Banta Kane is on the turf. Jay will promo that show anytime for some green. <laughs> Tomorrow night. We're talking about Freeney since 02 sack fumble, which is a, the worst thing in a quarterback's lexicon. And the two of them have combined for 56. First down, ball is at the 27 yard line. And the ball is handed off to the versatile Kevin Falk. Been doing his thing for 11 years with the Patriots. Short gain here. It'll be second down and seven. And there is Tully Banta Kane, who is a linebacker starter and also on special teams as well, who took a shot on that run back. And he's probably their best pass rusher. And when you're playing against Peyton Manning, you can't afford to have him sitting there. Belichick going over things with that defense, which watched the Colts go 90 yards. Sam Aiken is in the game. He's wide to the right. He's their number three receiver. And the ball is handed off to Falk. And Kevin fighting his way toward what he hopes will be a first down off a Stephen Neal block, but he is a little bit short of it. They'll spot the ball at the 36 and a half. It's going to make it third down and inches. Dan Copen and Stephen Neal right here. Two, two of the three best interior players, I think, in the game, along with Logan Mankins. And we're starting to see right now the Patriots trying to establish a running game early so they don't have to deal with these Colts pass rushes. And it's Brady who'll keep it himself and lunge ahead with a good thrust to the 40-yard line, and that will be a first down. Jim Caldwell was the anointed one. They talked about him replacing Tony Dungy whenever it was that Tony was going to retire. That had been the case for over a year. The only prior head coaching experience is when he was the head coach at Wake Forest. And he got fired in 2000 and was trying to get a job for one of his assistants. And he called Tony Dungy, who was at Tampa. And Caldwell winds up getting a job on Tony's staff and then comes to Indianapolis when Tony came here in 02. Brady off the fake, has time, and in stride hits Randy Moss. And Moss with Bullock trying to take him down, but he can't bring him down until he gets to the six-yard line. Perfect pass over the middle, threads the needle, in stride, 55 yards first and goal. Well, all those running plays set up this. Linebackers are now stepping up on the play-action fake, and you're able to get Randy Moss with a free release right down the middle I'm going to suggest that's not a great idea for the future when they've had success against Randy Moss they get somebody out in his face and beat him up a little bit when he gets long striding tough to stop Maroney is the tailback 
He swings to the outside. And Maroney will take it to the one-yard line. He's tackled there by Clint Session. They've been running back by committee in New England this uh, season for the most part. Of course, Fred Taylor was brought in from Jacksonville, got hurt. Maroney, and he's been a disappointment to a degree through his career. Number one draft choice. You thought he'd be better by now, and he understands that. His average right now, 4.3, but he has an opportunity with all of the injuries, Sammy Morris and Fred Taylor, to really shine. But over the last three games, when he's gotten that chance, closer to five yards a carry. Second down and goal. Maroney again. And into the end zone he goes for the touchdown. So a 90-yard Indianapolis drive is answered very quickly in a three-and-a-half-minute 73-yard drive by the New England Patriots. An extra point away from tying the game. They bring in an extra offensive lineman over here, Mark Lavore. And he just gets the double team and gets them in. And with Lawrence from Maroney talking to him last night, he said, I'm tired of all the suggestions. I'm going back to what I know about running the football. And really, it's paid off. He's been running much tougher lately. Steven Gostowski for the extra point. Chris Hansen to hold it. After each team goes three and out, each team with a long touchdown drive. That's more like it. 447 left in the quarter. 7-7. Right here on NBC. What do you got for that? <laughs> Used to be a Raider fan. <laughs> Five yards into the end zone, Chad Simpson will down it there. And with 4.47 to go, Peyton Manning coming back. And, of course, the big play on that drive was the pass to Moss. Well, we talked about what happens when you establish your run. Watch Gary Brackett hesitate for just a moment here on this play-action fake. Going to step up, and now you have not a tight end, but Randy Moss running behind you, and he simply couldn't get in the hole against that cover two defense. Donald Brown comes into the game. Brown was their number one draft choice. Hurt his shoulder a couple of weeks ago, so he has been inactive for the last couple of games. Rod Minkovich is now going to play the outside linebacker spot, normally occupied by Tully Bantakane. He is number 50. Manning setting up and throwing, and that will be caught by Wayne, and Wayne will pick up a first down out running the inside linebacker Gary Geit. Meanwhile, let's go back to Joseph Adai, who hurt his hand or fingers on the touchdown play. Watch the off the right hand, and he gets it tangled up with Brandon McGowan, and he went from the bench back to the locker room. So that's why Brown is in at the moment. The ball is at the 36-yard line. First and 10. And a toss to the rookie. And he'll get taken down by Lee Martin. So, Andrea, what do you know about a die right now? Well, he just came back on the field, Al. His index and middle finger on his right hand are taped together over his gloves. At least they do have Donald Brown in there, as you mentioned. Remember, though, he missed the past two games with a sprained left shoulder. Right, and ironically, it was a die hurting his hand on a reception because it was after the reception as he got hit at the goal line. But in his touchdown tonight, a 15-yard pass play to a die. Second down and nine with the ball to the 37-yard line. Again, and that pass is caught by Austin Colley, the good-looking rookie out of BYU drafted in the fourth round who's already made a big mark. Darius Butler, a rookie from Connecticut, makes the tackle. Well, now let's look at the changeup here. Gary Guyton, a linebacker, is going to come up on Dallas Clark and bump and run coverage as they go back to the no-huddle offense. Third down and seven from the 39-yard line. Collie in motion to the inside. Manning has to step away from pressure, and the pass is incomplete. Pressure coming from behind, trying to get it out to Brown. He was covered by Gerard Mayo, and Myron Pryor, the rookie lineman out of Kentucky, is the guy that time who put the heat on Manning from behind. Yeah, filling in for Tully Bantikane is going to come around here and get some pressure. This is exactly what they were trying to do by starting Derek Burgess in this game, trying to get a little additional pressure, and that time Ninkovich got there. Here's McAfee now to punt. On 
longtime punter Hunter Smith now with Washington. He's been involved in two touchdowns, one run and one pass this season. And Wes Welker brings it back to the 29 after a short kick. 42 yard move, 10 yard return, 307 remaining in the quarter. Game tied at seven. Teams of the decade. The decade drawing to a close. Most regular season wins. The Colts 109 and the Pats 108. 12 or more games the Colts have won over the last six seasons. Going on a seven. And you look at the Patriots with that perfect regular season. And the Patriots with those three Super Bowl wins. And the Colts with one. So three rings for Belichick. Tony Dungy won the ring following the 06 season with Manning. This game now tied 7 all. First and 10 with three minutes to play in the quarter, and the ball is the 29 yard line. And they'll start with a run. And this is Kevin Falk going to the outside after getting initially stopped at the line of scrimmage. He's able to break free, and Bethea is back there, and Mathis goes all the way back down the field to run him down after a gain of 29. Well, one of the problems that you're going to have here, you've got Gerard Powers, a corner coming up here and trying to make this play. Because of all the receivers on the field, it forces the Colts to go into this nickel and dime defense. But watch Robert Mathis. You talk about how much this defense hustles. How many defensive ends you ever seen do that? First and ten, Brady off the fake, pumping. And then going deep and much too deep, Randy Moss was covered by Jacob Lacey. It'll be second down and 10 with 2.20 remaining in the quarter. Sebastian Vollmer is the new starter at left tackle for the Patriots, and I don't think that Dwight Freeney thought one time during the course of this game that he would see one-on-one -on -one protection on the outside. But Vollmer, who has played very, very well for Matt Light, did a great job there. The just activated Isaiah Standback comes into the game. Number nine, he was a quarterback at Washington. There's Vollmer. One of multiple second round choices for the Patriots in the last draft. And the handoff to Kevin Falk, and he goes next to nowhere. Stopped at the 40 yard line. That's Powers again in on the action, coming up to the line of scrimmage to stop him. Yeah, Gerard Powers, the rookie cornerback, just got his revenge on that one. <laughs> Bill Belichick got him on the last one as Falk broke out of there on the long run, but that time Powers got his. Third and nine. Good protection. And then a great catch by Randy Moss at the 21-yard line. Going to the outside, getting position on Bethay, and a 20-yard gain in the first down off a third and long. Boy, Tom Brady with a pump fake right here is going to pump to the outside and freeze this cornerback right here so that he can't fall back underneath Randy Moss. Great play by Brady. And now they go, no huddle is... It is Brady, and he, I think he goes no huddle there, thinking that, that that play was close enough on the sideline that they wanted to avoid a challenge, a potential challenge on the Moss catch. That was Moss's third catch, and so Brady goes to the line of, of scrimmage as if to indicate, hey, we don't want to give them time to think about this and overturn it. Clearly in. Second down and nine. Brady with three completions tonight. In five attempts, all three to Moss. Now a flag. Scott Green throwing the flag on the inside handoff to Kevin Falk. Holding. Offense. Number 67. 10-yard penalty. Second down. The center, Dan Copen. The center here. And it's going to be interesting to watch Dan Copen tonight. He was out of the game last week with a knee injury some question as to whether or not he was going to be able to make this one but that time Daniel Muir just a little too quick for him. Now in the final minute of the quarter second down and 19. That's Watson moving 
into the slot on the left. Fake to Maroney. Pass over the middle. Welker makes the catch. He gets it to the 15 yard line. So it takes Brady almost a quarter, but you know sooner or later he's going to find Wes Welker, who makes his team leading 56th catch of the year. And that was the first snap this entire game the Colts played defensively without their nickel. Tom Brady saw it and picked it apart. 56 grams for Welker, who's also missed a couple of games. So that's in six games plus a quarter. Good quarter, the game tied at seven. And NBC's Sunday Night Football from Indianapolis continues after these messages. Second quarter in Indianapolis. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Andrea Kramer. The game is tied at seven, and it's third down and four for the Patriots at the Indianapolis 15-yard line. Kevin Falk flanking Brady. They've got Julian Edelman has missed a couple of games with a broken forearm in the game at wideout. And the pass goes to the outside, and that is Isaiah Standback just activated, making the catch and picking up a first down. Well, one of the problems that you have, you try and come up and bring everybody around the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of support underneath. That time we're seeing Tom Brady. Anytime these pass rushers just, they have to make a quick move to try and get there. You can see how frustrated they've been so far because Tom Brady has just gotten the ball out of his hand so quickly. Stand back. Seldom used performer past couple of seasons at Dallas had two receptions last year. Ball at the six. Here come the Colts and the pass is incomplete. Brady could feel it coming from his left side intended for Randy Moss and got it away quickly. Second and goal. Well, they came with a safety blitz that time and it left one on one with the outside. Randy Moss against Gerard Powers and they call this rookie an old man. They said they have never seen anybody come in with the kind of understanding of the game of football that this kid has. He just continues to impress them. They think he's a future pro bowler. Moss got shaken up. Moss comes off the field here. Back on the bench on second down and goal out of a tight formation. And they give it to Maloney looking for a slot behind a Ben Jarvis Green Ellis block. And he is tackled at the four yard line. It'll be third down and goal. And Moss needs a moment on the sideline. Yeah, for Randy Moss, that's what Tom Brady said. We said, all right, when you go out and you're playing against the Indianapolis Colts, what's the first thing you look at when you break the huddle? His answer was easy. How are they playing Randy Moss? Third and goal. They send Moss out to the right. Walker initially starts to line up in the slot that way. Now comes this way. Stand back is wide to the left. Third and goal. And Brady's going to go down at the 14, and it's Robert Mathis. Mathis and Freeney had not put that much heat on Brady to this point. And a big sack on a third and goal, fourth down now. Robert Mathis sets up Nick Casher outside. Dick then goes back inside and comes away with the sack. Huge play. That's the kind of pressure they're going to need tonight if they're going to have a chance against this Patriots offense. Red zone woes continue for New England. Right now they're 26th in the league in red zone touchdown percentage. 31 yard attempt coming up here for Gostowski to try to give New England the lead and he does. A minute 45 into the second quarter. Rivalry of the decade. New England 10, Indianapolis 7. Bill Belichick, he knows Peyton Manning extremely well. He knows a lot of great quarterbacks very well against Joe Montana. It was his record against Dan Marino. This is Bill as a head coach, Cleveland or New England, and is the primary defensive assistant, either with the Giants in the 80s or the Jets at the end of the 90s. And Manning, 7-7 seven and seven in the regular season, 2-1 and one in postseason. So when you think about it, Belichick and Manning have played this little chess game for the equivalent of more than a full season. They have their three postseason confrontations. And that kick is fielded eight yards deep in the end zone by Chad Simpson. 
Well, you can watch them on the sideline going over the Polaroids, and they're looking at the same exact pictures. But as far as brain power, Peyton Manning against Bill Belichick, that's pretty good. That's a pretty serious competition on the respective sidelines. And Peyton was telling us last night that Bill Belichick stands at the 50 and watches us warm up. I turn around and watch them warm up. And, of course, they do completely the opposite of what they do in the game during pregame warm up. There is a lot of gamesmanship going on out here. The essence of the game is deception. Donald Brown is the running back. First down. From the 20. Quick drop, quick pass, Austin Colley, but they're going to whistle it out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That is where he steps out after a gain of, let's make it the 26, gain of six. One of the things that you'll see the Colts do is use these little pick plays in here. They're pretty good at it. They don't always make a lot of contact like there. All it does is create a little space for that right, slot right, receiver right. to come off and make the play. That time Peyton thought he saw a blitz and went right to the pick. Second and four. Well, hero, hero. It's an NBC promo. <laughs> Hand off to Brown. And Brown for a very short gain over the right side. It'll be third down and three. As you can see, Banta Kane questionable with that rib injury sustained on a special teams play. And Adalis Thomas has been in a, uh, I wouldn't say the doghouse, but kind of let somebody mind them for a couple of weeks, is back in. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Pierre Garçon and Lee Bodden with the coverage on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Lee Bodden, the guy that started 15 games for the Lions last year, an old war horse in this league, is just going to beat Pierre Garçon to the ball. And I think a lot of times these Patriots cornerbacks, they read the drop of Peyton Manning. So once you see a corner do something like that, look for those double moves to come. McAfee. My floater, fair catch, pulled for by Welker. 12.09 remaining. First hit. Pass by three. Odd juxtaposition when you look at how they both got into the National Football League. Manning, of course, was a heralded high school player as well as a college player at Tennessee, and he knew he'd go one or two in the draft, and he went number one. Brady played at Michigan, and you know the story, sixth round. So whereas Manning was the first guy picked in the draft, Tom was the 199th in 2000. And they send it out to Welker, and Wes Welker will pick up 12 yards on a screen to the outside, tackled by Gary Brackett. One of the early stories in this game for me is Sebastian Vollmer, the left tackle who's playing for Matt Light. Here's a guy that grew up in Germany, was a soccer player and swam, and just didn't think it was quite physical enough for him. So he joined a local American football team, made the German national team and European all-star team, traveled to the States for the global championships and impressed so many people there that he had about 10 recruiters show up on his doorstep, ended up going to Houston and went out playing in the National Football League against Dwight Freeney. On first and 10, and Brady buying time. Sends it deep down the field and it is Moss making the catch and going into the end zone. Antoine Bethea is right there, but Moss makes it look so easy as he gets under it. That ball hung forever and he's able to make the catch and go into the end zone. I absolutely love what they're doing here. Forget the corners. Go run your routes on the safeties. you got Antoine Bethea going straight down the middle of the field, basically having to turn and run against Randy Moss. Not happening. So Randy Moss against the safety, just an unfair competition. Tom Brady took advantage. Look at that catch. Oh, it's great. Big key again, Sebastian Vollmer. Look at the job he's doing on Dwight Freeney. That route took some time. He had him under control. Moss had a 71-yard touchdown reception last week, 63 tonight. The extra point by Gostowski is good. Moss has caught four balls for 144. 
And New England has a 10-point lead early in the second quarter. Tony Dungy is back in New York and, of course, watching the game in our studios at 30 Rock. And clearly, Randy Moss has been the story of the game so far. And in, in addition to Moss, what else have you seen so far, Tony? Well, they've done a great job, New England, moving him around to get him away from the double team. But also, the Colts haven't gone to Dallas Clark, even though he's been covered by a linebacker a lot. I think Peyton may be out thinking himself, figuring they're going to take him away. Uh, they'll start to go to him, I'm sure, against that linebacker coverage. And we'll watch that as this drive will commence after the run back. And the kick is taken a yard into the end zone by Chad Simpson. And Chad will bring it up past the 20 and get tackled up at the 23-yard line. Kyle Arrington made the hard hit. Let's see if Peyton does go to Clark here. Clark has caught two balls tonight for 37 yards. Wayne has caught a pair as well for 41. Well, one of the things that Peyton's had trouble with here lately is the fact that no one's respecting his running game. I watched him against Houston last week, and he would go play fake on the stretch play that they used to run so well, and the linebackers would back up. It looked like a run, and the linebackers were going back. Throws it into the ground. Nothing happening. Throws it ahead to the line of scrimmage. He was out of the pocket, so there's no grounding. Second and ten. But you cannot be one-dimensional against great football teams. Now there is a flag. You have to at least throw it with a receiver somewhere in the neighborhood. Offensive pass interference. Number 17 blocking downfield on a forward pass. 10-yard penalty, first down. So it has nothing to do with grounding, but the penalty is on Kali. Well, well, here's what happens on this one. They expect the timing of the screen route to be such that he's going to get it out in about two or three seconds. When it didn't happen and Peyton tried to scramble out of there, they threw off the timing, they blocked early, and that's why you got the foul. So the down remains first down. It's first and 20 with the ball at the... Right line. Brown takes the inside handle. And Brown gets to the 21-yard line. Brandon McGowan making the tackle. It's a gain of seven. It'll be second and 13 through week nine. Indianapolis 29th in the league in rushing yards per game. And the average is 27. There's a die on the sideline right now. His average is 3.4. Brown coming in. His average was 4.6. Second and 13. And over the middle. Brown is open. And Brown up to the 28-yard line. Gary Guyton makes the stop. So from a first and 20, they go down to a third and six at the 28-yard line. Well, Donald Brown uh, missed a few weeks here. Uh, with a shoulder injury, but now is back in. And he's certainly, he's a very intelligent young man, good football player, very talented college player, and has really picked up this offense amazingly quickly. They don't lose a lot with a die out. 510 and 210. His size and weight played at Connecticut. 35 from the 29. toward the middle and look out and Manning goes down you've got a flag down as well at the 29 yard line on the near side of the field and that was a free shot for Gerard Mayo illegal shift offense two men moving penalty is declined fourth down and how did Mayo get that free? Well, it, it ended up happening. Peyton Manning saw what was coming, a blitz look coming, so he brought Dallas Clark down in tight, but the play clock was running down, and on that play, Dallas Clark had to try and get on the line of scrimmage and get Reggie Wayne off. They were both moving, and they come up with the penalty. So the late shift by the Patriots got Peyton that time. This is already McAfee's fourth punt. When's the last time you saw a Colt punter punt four times in the first 21 minutes of a game. Ball to the 28-yard line. Wes Welker with a run back, and he gets taken down from behind at the 42-yard line. 
Nine and a half to play in the half. New England up by ten. Indiana State Capitol on it. About a 55 degree night outside. Roof closed at Lucas Oil Stadium. First and ten now for the Patriots from the 43 yard line. New England up by ten. The play fake getting free is Ben Watson and the tight end to the 21-yard line. Tom Brady, the inside fake out of the gun. That's good for 36 yards, and he's shredding the Indianapolis secondary. Well, they shift coverages now, and Bullitt's going to come down and play a single high safety here. And Tom Brady had the absolute perfect call on. Ben Watson goes right by him with that 4-5 speed of his. And right now, the Colts just have no answers for Tom Brady. And another problem, Tim Jennings starting corner has just limped off to the 21-yard line. Five-yard gain here for Lawrence Maroney, second down. Let's go back to 07, and you're going to see a pretty familiar play here. Both these teams undefeated, and Randy Moss, same thing, same guy, Antoine Bethea. Instead of running routes on the corners, they go straight up the numbers and force that safety to turn and play like a cornerback. They're not used to doing that. They're not used to playing these balls in the air, and Bethea got burned years apart. Second down and five. From the 16-yard line, here's Brady to the outside. And that's caught, and that's going to be a first down. Chris Baker making the catch. And the other thing we have to bring up, too, Chris, is that Bob Sanders, who was the defensive player of the year a couple of years ago, he is gone for the season. Kelvin Hayden is not playing. And neither is Marlon Jackson. They are already, before the game even starts, minus three guys who are huge. And when we were at practice on Friday, Aaron Francisco, who they plan to play as the dime back, got hurt in practice, and he can't play in this one. So they start with two rookie corners. They're all over the place right now. Brady having a field day. Has thrown for 223 yards in a quarter and a half. And that pass is incomplete. The coverage good that time on Moss. Looked like a little miscommunication as Gerard Powers with the coverage. And looking back was Moss as if to say, I didn't know you were going to throw me a fade. Slant and go here. Watch this. He's going to come in, fake the slant. Watch the reaction by Powers. This kid's really something. I mean, he is really a good player. How many rookie corners have ever had Randy Moss assigned to him in a one-on-one -on -one situation? And so far, he's held his own. Now, the safeties have been getting burned, but he's done okay. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Moss splits to the right. Brady under pressure, avoids the sack, gets it away, throws to the end zone. Julian Edelman. Five plays, 57 yards. And that's 23 going on 24 unanswered points for New England. Edelman, a rookie out of Kent State where he was a quarterback, has just scored his first NFL touchdown. for the extra point. Well, I said at the beginning, this was they had the buzz of a heavyweight championship fight. If this were a heavyweight championship fight, I think they would be sending New England to a neutral corner right now to uh, give India a break. No question about it. Robert Mathis had a chance over here. He had Tom Brady, beats Nick Casher and gets him in his hands, but Brady too strong, escapes, buys a little time, and finally finds Edelman. It was really the key to the play. You know, Tom Brady's not a fast guy. He's not a scrambler. But he is a guy that within the pocket has a great feel for when somebody's coming after him, just avoids, buys time, and you can imagine trying to cover somebody for six seconds at this part of the field. White Franey on the other side tries to come with the inside move, but they have neutralized him all game long. And in fairness, let's say this, Sebastian Vollmer, for the most part, has not had a lot of help. That has been a tremendous key to this explosion of points for the Patriots. So Edelman with a broken forearm, and he has that cast 
on the right arm and that 24 points against a defense leading the league in fewest points allowed coming in. Simpson downs it in the end zone. They start at the 20. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Disney's Old Dogs in theaters everywhere November the 25th. By Toyota moving forward. By Subway Restaurants introducing Subway melts like chicken cordon bleu. Subway eat fresh. And by Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. Don't look at me when I promote <laughs> Old Dogs. Would you stop it? You're the best. <laughs> That's your Bengals. First down of the 20-yard line. Chad Simpson is the running back, so now they go to their number three back with the die on the bench and Brown on the bench, and it's Simpson up to the 26-yard line. Watch Vince Wilfork right inside here. We had a chance to meet him last night. He's one of the largest human beings I've ever seen. He comes in, he's a great guy, just so personable, loves playing the game, has a lot of fun. Manning hit as he throws, and also the receiver, Robinson, hit as he throws, and Mayo says, uh-uh. Well, I tell you, this game is, is almost being played in reverse for me. I thought that, that you would see a ton of pressure by the Colts in this game, and yet it is the Patriots' pressure on the outside. Derek Burgess is working on Ryan Deem, and Deem just barely gets a finger on him. I mean, this pre pass protection has to get better for Peyton Manning because they cannot run the ball. They have to rely on him making plays. Colts so out of sync that they huddle before a third down and five from the 25 yard line. And then back off. That gives Manning time. And the pass is caught by Wayne. And he's able to shoulder his way across the 30 for a first down before he's tackled by Darius Butler. Well, they're going back to the basics of their playbook now. They just get Reggie Wayne in the slot with that little in and out move. He is one of the quicker receivers around. And Jim Caldwell, I guarantee you, he's not panicked. He's seen the Indianapolis Colts have a big comeback before in that championship game. They were down 21 to 3. As he was on the staff for years, and that set the Colts to the Super Bowl. They're racing an 18 point deficit. They have got Wayne, and he'll be taken down after an eight yard game by 24. Jonathan Will Height. Well, if the last play, they brought Reggie Wayne in and then out. This time they're going to go out and then in. The Patriots, as they have done the majority of the times in the past, want to try and pressure these wideouts and get in their face. Second and a long one. Back to the ground now. And this is Simpson up to the 46-yard line. Again, if you missed it, Adai scored a touchdown earlier in the game but had to go to the locker room, and they taped two fingers together, so he has not been in since. We'll take a look at how they've taped them up there. And so it would be in particular difficult to get involved in the passing game again. And their touchdown tonight was on a pass to him. And then Brown played the last couple of series. And now Simpson is in here. That's the fake. Manning has a ton of time. Over the middle, that pass is incomplete. And here come the flags. Pierre Garçon interfered with by Lee Bodden. Interference, defense, number 23. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Well, there you had Pierre Garçon, the guy that Peyton Manning thought was going to have to make some plays, probably the fastest of these receivers. And Lee Bodden is going to grab the jersey there at the end, and when they see that little tug, they're going to call it. That's a 19-yard penalty. First down at the 36 yard line. Simpson inside the 30 picks up a first down and who would have ever figured that Chad Simpson who mainly runs back kicks would come into the game on a very key drive with the team down by 17 and do the job. Derek Burgess is going to blow this one. He's going to loop back inside trying to get a pass rush and he ends up losing contain. Boy Jeff Saturday what a nice move by him to get on the outside and get the contain sealed as well. Great speed on that one by Saturday. Andy Huddling again. Donald Brown now comes back in. He's the running back. At the 20 and first down. Four and a half to the half. Fake toss. 
Manning with time. And then he throws that one too deep. Incomplete. Garcon at the back of the end zone. Covered well. Second down. And Garcon needs some help. They're going to run out of ambulances around here. Oof. It really was completely thrown off timing. Garcon, I think, almost thought the play was over, and then Peyton just threw it late. It's Remember, James Sanders who comes in at the end. Remember, no force out anymore, so this is clearly out of bounds. And Garcon still, still down. Hopefully just hear the wind getting knocked out of him by the legs of Sanders as he went to the turf. Yeah, you can see Sanders' legs sort of getting him in the midsection, and let's hope all it did was knock the wind out of him. That'll send Hank Basket into the game, the former Eagle. And it's not totally shocking in practice on Friday he was taking a lot of reps and so he's sort of slowly the last couple of weeks been playing a little bit more of the former Philadelphia Eagle who uh, just sort of jogged on the field and jogged off so yeah <laughs> I don't know if you get a stat for that just a cameo second and ten The second year back, Will Height, and on a drive that Indianapolis needed to cash in on, they get seven. This time you're going to see the safety try and jump underneath. When Reggie Wayne went up the field, Peyton Manning kept looking left, and the safety kept drifting that way until he was completely out of position. Great job by Reggie Wayne getting those feet down, too. And now it's officially seven with the extra point. It's Stover. Boots it through, so after New England has scored 24 unanswered points. Back on the Colts. Eight plays, 80 yards. It's 24-14, Patriots. Wrapping Garcon's left foot on the sideline after he was hurt, and then Wayne makes the catch in the back of the end zone to make it a 10-point game again. And with 4.17 to the half, New England will get the ball. Well, Reggie Wayne benefited that time from all the attention that Dallas Clark was getting. Tony Dungy talking about how much attention that these Patriots pay to Dallas Clark, who had 14 catches a week ago. And uh, Bill Belichick said, believe me, he won't have 14 against us. They had a plan for him, but it did open up things for Reggie Wayne. Wayne's caught five tonight for 77 yards. Manning is 13 of 19 for 155, and Brady has already thrown for 232 yards. Three yards in, that's Matthew Slater being told, don't come out. By Wheatley, quarterback comparison, take a look at the figures right here. Those long passes to Moss, a near perfect rating for Brady. And good numbers for Manning, but his team was in serious trouble before that last drive, and he's able to lead them down the field on an 80-yard march. Well, the number one scoring defense in the NFL is the Indianapolis Colts, and so far they've been getting scorched out here. From the 20. Colt showed pressure and checked out of it. And incomplete on a dump off the fall underneath. Second and ten. Again, we were talking about coming into the game, the two teams that had given up the fewest points per game in the league. 13.5 for the Colts. And already 24 tonight. We're on pace to give up about 50 after allowing 13 and a half. Here's Larry Coyer. He is the 
new defensive coordinator Ron Meeks was here for years. The Coyer and Jim Polo go way back second and ten and that pass is incomplete. It'll be third and ten on a pass intended for Wes Welker. Well you saw the Colts and Peyton Manning try and get back to what they do. Wes Welker establishing something underneath is so important for Randy Moss because if they can just play him deep and not play Welker it doesn't work. Crowd looking for a three and out. Spin around and they get their three and out. Well, we've seen Tom Brady on the cover of nearly every magazine in the country, sports and otherwise. He might be added to the list for the ballet magazine for next week. <laughs> Never seen him do a little pirouette like that before. Hanson the punt. He's so rushing, counting the guys in front of him to make sure there were 11 out there. Line fair catch call for by rushing. Now one of the great things about this rivalry, the games have been so highly anticipated, and most of them have have really lived up to the building. I read something the other day. Somebody actually wrote that the networks made a deal with the league to make sure these two teams face each other. And even though they're not in the same division, that's not how it works. There's a formula, and it just so happened to work out that almost every year they do face each other. Well, it's a good idea, and if there is that formula, let's have it twice let's, a year. We should do that. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. These two teams used to be in the same division, and the games meant nothing when they did play twice a year. And now that they switch divisions, all of a sudden, this is the greatest rivalry of all time. First down from the 25-yard line, Manning. Off the play fake, going deep, and that is caught by Garcon, but then he loses the ball. Looked like Garcon, who had been hurt and had his foot wrapped, twisting around, had it just for a second, bottom with the coverage, but it's incomplete, second down. Well, Garcon's going to have to win these battles. He is one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, the ankle bothering him a little bit, so we'll give him some benefit of the doubt. But it is the coverage on Dallas Clark right now that's allowing him to operate. But so far, Lee Bottom has been winning. Second down and 10. Now Brown. And Brown is able to pull his way to the 30-yard line where he's tackled by Pat Shung. Ball at the 30 now. Third down and five for the Colts. Let's go back to that last play and we'll take a look at Dallas Clark. Coming off the ball in the slot right over here. And you see he's got all kinds of traffic around him. They simply are not going to let Dallas Clark win this battle tonight. And injury timeout. That is Rob Nikovich who is down on the ground. Banta Kane was injured earlier, so there's the man who was filling the spot. Occupied by the starter Banta Kane. So they are really down to Derek Burgess and Adalis Thomas on the outside. 324 to play in the first half. And as you look down upon the state capital of Indiana, tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by the blind side. I'm not so sure this crowd doesn't think that that injury had something to do with wanting the Patriots to make a few substitutions That's, out there. This is a pretty sophisticated well, crowd. They've seen it happen before. I'm thinking the same thing. When a guy is down and then all of a sudden he gets up and he looks like he can run a marathon, there is some skepticism. Take that back. Take that back. Third down and five, the 30 yard line. start offense number 85 five yard penalty third down that's Garcon who was lined up wide to the right he did 
He definitely flinched. And you know, sometimes this stadium gets so quiet, wide receivers aren't used to hearing the snap count. You know, there's always a bunch of noise and things. And when it's this quiet, you start hearing all those crazy calls by Peyton and he just jumped. Hey, two on the three. Him. Third and ten. behind Clark and incomplete. And Derek Burgess forced the issue getting into the backfield and hitting Manning fourth and ten. And on the coverage, a kid I really like this Patrick Chung, number 25. Last week and last couple of weeks, he's proven what a great blitzer he is. Now out there in coverage on Dallas Clark, they have some really good young safeties for the New England Patriots. They can hit, they can cover, and they can run. So McAfee the punt fifth in the punt. They also punted five times in the first half against the 49ers a couple of years ago. And Hunter Smith is here. Sometimes he wouldn't even have to shower. He would barely see any action. But tonight a different story. Five boots. Here's Walker from the 27 yard line. And he's out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. Speaking of magazine covers for Brady. He runs the gamut. GQ. SI plenty of times. Of course, there's Peyton <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> yeah, there's a little, what do you call it, dichotomy here? And then they both make it from time to time. You know, I think I can say any word in the English language, and they can find something to throw up from the truck down there. Right. <laughs> These guys are remarkable. They even had magazines on hold. But neither guy's been on popular mechanics, to our knowledge, yet. First and ten from the 36-yard line. And this drive begins with four for a short game. So ticked out of the two-minute warning. Two and a half to play in the half. How much does Tom Brady like Kevin Falk? He was really singing his praises about how he's one of the most intelligent players that he has ever played with. Loves having him in the backfield. Understands the passing game. Understands protections. And just loves him as a guy and as a teammate. He told us last night right at the top of the list of smart players dependable always in the right place 11th year fall second round pick back in 99 so he preceded Brady in New England and Brady will let the clock run all the way down to the two minute warning in Indianapolis Patriots 24 Colts 14 the Indianapolis Indians Pittsburgh Pirates Triple A affiliate in the International League saluting the Colts on this Sunday night, second down and eight. With Brady spinning around and throwing it at the feet of Falk because Robert Mathis got right in his grill. Third down and eight. What a brilliant play by Robert Mathis. Even on the bit of a double team coming on the outside. Watch this move. Splits the two and on a screen pass nearly gets a sack. Robert Mathis against Nick Casher has been the best that the Colts have been able to throw at the Patriots tonight. That took literary license for getting into the grill. <laughs> Third down and eight. You get the point. Here's Brady going to the right side. Caught at the 40-yard line. This is Edelman. But he can only get to the 43-yard line. Edelman with that cast on the right forearm. When he scored that touchdown before his first NFL touchdown, he was a right-handed quarterback at Kent State. He had to spike it left-handed. Watch Stan back here. Going to come down and get a chip against Dwight Freeney. Freeney said, I know I'm going to end up getting hit from all different directions, but for a wide receiver, that's a pretty good one right there. Mm -hmm. So now with 147, Chris Hansen with his third punt of the night. TJ rushing to run it back. Pretty unusual. Eight punts in a game in which there were 38 points before the half. A lot of big plays. Yep. Quick drives. Quick scoring drives. Just does get that one away. And it's a floating short kick. It takes a sideways skip. And we're down at the 24 yard line. So Peyton coming back out. He has 
two timeouts, 33 yard boot. Yep. And, uh, yeah, look at that Simpson now, who had come in and, and did a good job with a head injury, and he is questionable to return. So a die with his fingers. Brown's coming back off the shoulder, and now you got a problem with Simpson. Well, that just means throw a couple more wide receivers on the field and let Peyton Manning go to work. This is. Remember him uh, against Tennessee right before the half. He drive the drive he put together, and this is a guy with a couple of timeouts in a minute and 36 seconds. Pretty tough to deal with. We'll see. By Reggie Wayne for a gain of six. They're spotted at the 30 yard line. They're leaving Dallas Clark down inside here to help on protection. It's really widening Derek Burgess here. Clark goes out, out into the pattern. The pass is caught. That's Wayne. They try to get out of bounds, but he can't. Clock keeps running. The ball is up at the 36 yard line, tackled by Will Height. Yep. Reggie Wayne right out of here. Or Dallas Clark, I'm sorry, on the end of the line of scrimmage, correction Burgess. And on the pass, a short pass caught by Colley. So New England giving them what Indy's taking underneath with the clock ticking down under 50 seconds. Again, two timeouts remaining for the Colts. And this time it's Garçon. He gets the ball into New England territory at the 48 yard line. He had a penalty. Illegal motion, offense, back was not set. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That back was Brown. Illegal motion with 41 seconds. Well, we saw Donald Brown in practice the other day. Of course, he's been out a few weeks with the shoulder injury, and he looked a little uncomfortable. He and Peyton ran into each other one time on a handoff, and you know, you just sit out a couple of weeks in this offense, and all of a sudden there's a lot of foreign things. They change everything every week, and Donald Brown just got caught, just a rookie. Second down and seven. Peyton getting to that point, he's going to have to start looking deeper downfield. As New England knows that as well. I tell you though, you are starting to see the, the defensive linemen for the Patriots in this no huddle offense getting a little worn down here. They don't have much depth left over there because of all the injuries. This will be the 36th play run by the Colts in this half. And Manning going deep down the field and then in this drop that is Austin Collie. He had good inside position. The pass was a strike and he dropped it. Third down. Well, nice move by Austin Collie to get open. He's going to go out, fake the out, come back inside. But Al, you know, sometimes they talk about rookies and young players, and we've seen Austin Collie and Pierre Garcon who played so well make some big mistakes tonight. Third down and seven. Manning out of the outside intended for Collie, and that pass is incomplete. And now Indianapolis is in a situation where they're forced to punt. Well, the one thing I thought Collie had trouble with last week against Houston was the bump and run coverage. And so far, we have seen the Patriots up in his face the entire game, forcing him to make moves against that bump and run coverage, and it hasn't worked. And timeout is taken by New England. New England. This will be the sixth punt for McAfee. And it's uh, the most punts in a first half by the Colts since 1992. Through the decades. Talking about the Colts at 109, and there they were. Lombardi's Packers with 96 in the 60s. The Cowboys under Landry with 105 in the 70s. And then Bill Walsh started to weave his magic in San Francisco with 104. And that continued into the 90s with George Seifert and Steve Mariucci at 113. So the 49ers had that spectacular 20-year run. And now the Colts at a buck 09 in this decade. Fourth and seven. Welk is just going to let the punt go. And that punt will be down at the nine yard line with 22 seconds. And Brady will probably just take a knee and the teams will head to the locker room. Yeah, the Colts do have a couple of timeouts here. So 
can't really afford an incomplete pass at this point, or you might have to give it back to them. Yep, that's well, they've got two timeouts. Right. You can only stop it twice. Belichick looking up at the clock and knowing what the strategy is here. Meanwhile, New England will get the ball to start the second half. Remember, they won the opening toss and elected to defer. So knowing the math right here, you can still do a couple of kneel downs. And, and then on third down, you just let the, the clock run out. And no sense in Indy even calling the timeout right here. The teams will head to the locker room after a 38-point first half. Halftime in Indianapolis, New England, 24. The Indianapolis Colts, 14. The Toyota Halftime Show. Coming right up, but first, these messages from your local NBC station. This is like the buzz before a heavyweight championship fight. It's all of a sudden, this is the greatest rivalry of all time. At the half, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Andrea Kramer from Indianapolis. As you take a look at the numbers put up by the two quarterbacks tonight, 237 yards, two touchdowns for Brady, two TDs for Manning, and let's check in with Andrea. Well, and of course, the big number, Al, for the Patriots is Randy Moss, four catches for 144 yards. I asked Jim Caldwell about him. He said, we have to keep the ball in front of us. The safeties have to play the ball. We have to make sure that Moss just doesn't get behind us. Now, injury-wise, for the Colts, the two running backs, Chad Simpson and, Je and uh, Joseph Adai, still both listed as questionable. And that's a, uh, a big blow. That means Donald Brown has to do all of the work in the backfield and he's coming off a, a shoulder injury and he's missed a couple of weeks and now McAfee to kick off and back to receive is Matthew Slater as the second half gets underway the Colts trying to stay unbeaten eight no coming in the Patriots with a record of six and two four yards in Slater avoids a tackle back inside the 20 yard line and brings it back up to the 28. Big play in the first half. Chris, that touchdown pass to Moss. Superstars at work here. Tom Brady's going to buy a little time here. Watch him load up on this throw that travels about 63 yards in the air. And Randy Moss, we clocked him. Must be time for the Olympics around here. We clock him here, and he runs 33 and a half yards in 3.3 seconds, which translates to about a 3-6 40-yard dash. <laughs> Good luck covering that. Put him on a relay team. 27-yard line, first down. Maybe begins by giving it to Maroney, trying to cut it back the other way. And Maroney is able to make something out of nothing for Powers. Can knock him down coming into the game. Colts number one in fewest points allowed. The most points they'd allowed in any game this season. Total game was 23 against Miami in that Monday night of week two. Already 24 in the half tonight. Well, but you get intimidated when Randy Moss goes over the top of your defense. Now you have no choice but to back way up, and it creates a lot of holes. Second and four. And that pass is caught. That's Moss, as if he was going to go deep downfield and then turns it out. Short route has enough for the first down. Well, the big story of this first half has been the play of Sebastian Vollmer. Has he gotten some help? Yeah, absolutely here. But a lot of times it's been this. And I haven't seen anybody all season long that's done the job that Vollmer has done on Dwight Freeney. I think they have a budding star on their hands. Remember, he came to this country, didn't even speak English. They handed him the playbook, and he had to go get his vocabulary book first. 6'8 and 3'15. And Brady under pressure. And that pass will be juggled and incomplete. 
intended for Moss. You know, maybe one of the great things about growing up in Germany and not speaking very much, very good English is the fact you don't know what it means to have somebody tell you you're going to protect Tom Brady's blind side yeah. post-surgery. Yeah, you know, I mean, Matt Light, uh, one of the guys on the all-half-century all team for the Patriots, a great player for them for a long time, and he has seen somebody come in and really do a job in, in his stead tonight. Second and ten. And big hole for Kevin Falk. Over the 50. Stopped at the Colt 47-yard line. 15 yards for the guy who's been doing it for 11 seasons. Yeah, we're also seeing pretty good run blocking here as well. Watch Sebastian Vollmer here. Set that edge. There you go. Kevin Falk. Have some fun. And a lot of mileage out of those inside gives. They had Watson lined up in the backfield as well. First down now. Two minutes into the period at the 47-yard line. Look at Kevin Falk directing traffic. He knew exactly where he was supposed to go and where Ben Watson was supposed to go too. But I brought Watson in and now all of a sudden you have Wes Welker timeout. calling a timeout. New England. This is their first charge. So Welker sensed the offensive confusion. He said, let's not fool around. Timeout. There's Teddy Bruschi who retired. At the outset of the season, Rodney Harris retired. There's Bill O'Brien. He's the play caller. I think Tom Brady said, if you're going to get me a new play caller, get me a guy with a cleft in his chin. <laughs> <laughs> Dueling clefts. Josh McDaniels was the offensive coordinator. Now, of course, the head coach at Denver. Uh, first down the pass to Walker. And Walker, who leads all receivers, wide receivers, this season in yards after the catch, showing exactly what he does right there, gain of 14. Talk to Wes Welker. He calls these screen passes drive starters here. You've got three wideouts out there. If they don't present a third a guy on the outside that time, but they late getting there, Brady just raises up and hits Welker, and that is his game. He is dynamic. And I tell you, Al, my favorite part about watching this guy play is watching him block. Second only to Heinz Ward in my book. San Diego had him, and then they sent him to Miami for a couple of weeks, and then they wound up trading him to New England a couple of years ago. And Brady deep downfield to the end zone and intercepted. Picked off by Bethay, and then Bethay, an ill-advised attempt to run it out of the end zone, turns out better than it should have. Once he starts to come out, he's committed himself, and he almost got knocked down at about the goal line. Randy Moss, the pass intended for him, and Bethay with a very big pick. Boy, Tom Brady thought he made a great read here, and so did I when I first saw this thing. You're going to see this safety go this way, but Bethay is going to come back across this way and make the interception. I don't think Tom Brady ever saw it. He saw the safety on the left jump this thing, says, I've got Randy Moss wide open, and Bethay comes all the way across to make the play. Beautifully done. His third interception of the season. Joseph Adai has now come back into the game. First time we've seen him since he scored a touchdown and messed up his fingers. Middle finger, ring finger, now taped together on first and 10 from the 14-yard line. And they give it to him. And Adai will pick up four, getting to the 18-yard line. Gary Guyton makes the tackle, second and six. I like the move by the Colts here. We have seen throughout the course of this game, the Patriots have been playing two deep safeties. In the NFL, you have to be able to run against that formation. So the Colts have come out here in the second half with two tight ends now that are going to try and establish something running the football. All time offensive coordinator Tom Moore, second and six. Manning, going, the pass is incomplete. One hop by Garcon, third down and six for the Colts. That was a Haley's Comet right there. That was one you'd only see about once every 75 years that Peyton Manning throws one right in the dirt. It wasn't even close. I don't know what happened to the release of this ball, but that was a Scrooge. Third and six. We'll see him again in 75 more years. Manning moving to his left and throwing, and that is 
is one-handed. A grab by Wayne cutting across the field to the left sideline. He goes and makes the catch with Darius Butler, the rookie with the coverage. 20-yard game first down. Well, you pick on our rookie. We're going to pick on yours. Here we're going to put Reggie Wayne one-on-one. -on -one. You see all the bump and run coverage all over the field. That was a brilliant throw and catch. Game's picking up, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 38 yard line, eight catches for Wayne. Pick to a dive, buys time. Manning going deep, and then it's picked off at the 25 yard line. Garcon was in the neighborhood, but a bad throw by Peyton with Baden with perfect position, and the pick off, and then a flag down after the play. Two flags after the play at the 25 yard line. That was a duck. I've never seen two balls come out of the hands of Peyton Manning like that. And we're talking about two of the last three. After the play, unsportsmanlike, on the intercepting team, 50, uh, half the distance to the goal, first down. And that's why you saw that look on Belichick's face. Ten and a half left in the third. Each guy has thrown a pick now in the second half. Bob Kraft bought this team in the in the 90s. There's his wife Myra, son Jonathan, and of course now they are regarded as a model franchise. Went to a Super Bowl in the 90s with Bill Parcells. Lost to Green Bay and then of course the three championships. And four Super Bowl appearances in this decade. With the only loss coming to the Giants two years ago. Now after the interception, the pass is caught. And this is Walker. And again, those yards after catch that he's noted for up to the 25-yard line. And he picks up a first down on a gain of 13. Brady checked, and then Gary Brackett checked right back. And Tom Brady knew what he was doing. Look at him here. He's going to check to cover two, ball underneath. And Brady knows there's going to be a hole right over the ball because Brackett has to go back and cover that middle zone. Remember the one earlier in the game that Randy Moss hit him with it right down the middle. Nobody there. Great play by Brady. And Lawrence Moroni can go nowhere on his seventh carry of the night. You see Clint Session come flying in there on that one. That young man has come so far in the last couple of years. He says, if I'm going to run all the way to the football, I'm arriving angry. He had 14 tackles in the game last week. He has really developed, went from the strong side to the weak side, and it fits him perfectly with his speed. Came a starter last year. Fourth round pick in 07 out of the University of Pittsburgh. Second down and 11. They do a nice double team on Freeney to keep him out of the play. And the ball is caught by Moroni up at the 31-yard line, setting up a third down and three. Oh, boy. Volmer almost got had on that time. He ended up with a little help from his friend. Watch Volmer on the outside. Freeney's going to get him with that spin move, but Logan Mankin saves him at the last minute. Just another form of double team on Freeney. He's 45, left in the third. Patch by 10, third and three. Crowd imploring its defense to hold him. But they won't because Brady loves to go to Welker. And Welker has a first down up at the 39-yard line. Coverage on the play by the rookie out of Auburn, Gerard Powers. And for Wes Welker, that is five catches tonight for 60 yards. You know, Al, it's interesting because now they're helping on Mathis on the other side. Watch what happens over here. Now they get the back over there to help him because they're starting to develop some confidence in Bulmer on the other side, leaving him single and now trying to help Casher on the right side. Pick your poison. Mm -hmm. Trying to pick up those two guys. First and 10 from the 38 yard line. Brady chased out. Maroney makes the catch. Maroney with a Good little move to the inside of the 44-yard line. Mathis put the heat on Brady on that play. Well, we talked about the release point of Peyton Manning and how you struggled that last drive. Watch this NBC sequence here of Tom Brady. We're talking about a classic delivery. This was on the long ball to Randy Moss. Look at that release point. Left shoulder tucked underneath. 
releasing at the highest point of that pass, and that ball traveled nearly 65 yards. Just a thing of beauty. People have never talked enough for my satisfaction about Brady's arm strength, one of the strongest arms anywhere in the NFL. Classic case on that play, second down and three. His fourth. He has a first down, and the ball will be spotted in cold territory at the 45-yard line. And the Patriots tonight have accumulated 370 yards in two and a half quarters. Well, I tell you what, these guys inside, Stephen Neal, Dan Copen, Logan Mankins, they are as good as there is in the National Football League. Stephen Neal, he didn't even play college football, the right guard number 61. He was a college wrestler, ended up the world champion, and actually beat Brock Lesnar, the MMA champion, in the championship match of the NCAA. A lot of money to Dan Hodge the equivalent of wrestling's Heisman Trophy. Brady hops up to the line of scrimmage and hits Moss as he escapes the pressure. And then Randy Moss is able to haul it in, and that's another gain of 12 yards and a first down for the Patriots. Well, anybody who says Randy Moss won't go over the middle, watch this one. I always thought this should count as two catches. You know, as a former receiver, if you catch it once and then let it go and you catch it again, it ought to double your stats. He has put on some show tonight, hasn't he? Only you. <laughs> the value in the currency. <laughs> First and ten from the 32-yard line. Brady is now thrown for over 300 yards. And this is fourth. And fourth to the 22-yard line. The one thing about Brady through his career that's different than a lot of other quarterbacks is when he throws for 300 yards, he almost always wins. We brought it out years ago as we have an injured Colt that is Melvin Bullet who needs the attention and when we come back it'll be second down and one. So Bullet off the field. It's first down and ten. Silva comes in to replace Melvin at the strong safety spot from the 22 yard line. Four. We talked about Brady just before we went to the break. In the history of the NFL, when a guy throws for 300 yards, they win only about 53% of the time. The reason, of course, is that when you're behind and you're throwing, a lot of guys will throw for 300. But when Brady, who's now thrown for 300 or more in his last four games, when he throws for 300 yards, he's 25-2. and two. He doesn't lose very much, period, does he? <laughs> That's true. He really doesn't. <laughs> 300, 200, he just wins. And tonight, 303 already with about uh, 19 minutes and change to go. Maroney is the back on second and seven. Maroney again, and Maroney will set up a third and short inside the 15-yard line. And Lawrence Maroney's come in here and run well, but the guy that really has made the difference, I think, tonight is Kevin Falk. Kevin Falk has had a monster game thus far, and he checks back in here in this short yardage situation. You know, you expect to play him as a receiver coming out, but right now has around 79 yards rushing. As a matter of fact, he has the most yards for any running back that's never had a 100-yard day. This might be the day. It could be because you just saw Maroney go limping off as well. So it's third down and two. There's Maroney, under four to play. Big stop here for the Colts. And Brady has time and then throws, and that's going to be caught, and that's a first down. Chris Baker picked up in the offseason free agent from the Jets, tackled by Silva, and that'll set up a first and goal from the eight. Well, I've got to start with the pass protection, and we talked about Vollmer all night long, but look at it on both sides. Casher with a great block as well, and he's they're creating throwing lanes now for Tom Brady. He's able to step into these throws. He's able to see his receivers working down the field. I've got five game balls waiting for this offensive line so far. And Brady to the outside. That'll be caught. That's Falk, who gets tackled by Clint Session, covering on the play. It'll be second down and goal. Well, we sing the praises of Tom Brady in so many different ways, but he delivered that football and took a shot right to the chops by Raheem Brock. This is when you really start to admire quarterbacks. When they stand there knowing they're getting ready to get drilled, 
and still throw it that accurately. Brady, 20 of 30 for 315. And Maroney will shove his way, and the ball is loose. The ball is loose, and it's going to be ruled a touchback. He loses the ball before he crosses the goal line, and Gary Brackett saves the bacon. Indy ball at the 20. Taiwan Hagler is on injured reserve, and the guy who's filling his role is Philip Wheeler, 50, and he forces the fumble, which is recovered by Brackett. Philip Wheeler really did not play very well in the game last week, made a lot of mistakes, but me may have just saved the day for the Colts. This one was beginning to look like game, set, and match. From the 20-yard line, first down. And that was the end of an 87-yard drive, which ends with a turnover. New England's turned the ball over twice in the quarter. That's a die right there. And oddly enough, New England coming into the game, fewest fumbles in the league. That's only their sixth of the season and the third one they've lost. Yeah, I think it's the first fumble by a running back this year, too. Second down and five with the ball at the 25-yard line. And Manning's pass is into traffic and incomplete. Intended for Garçon, covered by Lee Bodden. Third down and five. Well, we talk about turnovers all the time, but in this particular rivalry, turnover advantage is absolutely huge. Regular season games, six and one, and the postseason, two and oh. Right now, the Lindley's turned it over twice tonight, and the Colts have turned it over one time. Third and five, that is caught, and Colley is able to reach across the 30-yard line and move the sticks. Pressure everywhere on the outside against these Colts receivers, and it has been effective against these guys. They are up in their face. Dallas Clark has seen it all night after catching one early. Hasn't been very effective. I'll tell you, Lee Biden's had a huge night as well. First and ten. A die, and he'll go nowhere because that's Thomas, Adalis Thomas, number 96, who makes the tackle. Adalis Thomas was inactive for a game earlier this year, and he couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's why I said before, yeah. you know, I was wondering if he was in the doghouse or, you know, the puppy house or I, I, whatever. From what they said, it's just other guys fit that plan better. That's the way the Patriots do it. Second and 11. Manning over the middle. Just an underneath pass caught by Robinson. And that's going to set up a, another third down with under a minute to play. It'll be third and five. Lee Bodden so far in this game has been tremendous. They've thrown at him nine times, completing just one, and has an interception. And if Pierre Garcon and Austin Collie were supposed to be the answer if they tried to take away Reggie Wayne and Dallas Clark. The answer hasn't worked out so well because of these corners. Six defensive backs in on this set. And third and five. Manning's going to go down the right sideline and spinning around and unable to make the catch is a die. Gerard Mayo is a young man that is a star in the league already. Not only does he have the ability to play the run, but you're talking about man-to-man -man coverage. Now, clearly, Adai had a chance for that one. But they have never had a linebacker here in the short term that can run and do the complete coverage, play the run, run sideline to sideline the way that Gerard Mayo can. McAfee averaging 50 yards a kick tonight. This is his seventh punt, so wobbler. Welker up past the 40. And Welker with a big run back for the Patriots. Inside the 30, staying in bounds. And Welker will take it down to set up a first down and goal. Bad kick, big run back, and that's the way the third quarter ends. A scoreless third quarter because of the turnovers. But the fourth quarter will start with a first and goal, 24-14 New England, 
Sunday Night Football back after these messages. In Indianapolis, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Andrew Kramer is a look at Wes Walker, who's just run a punt back for 69 yards, setting up a first down and goal for New England. So they were inside the five before on their last drive, and then a Maroney fumble resulted in the touchback. But here they are again at the seven yard line, first down and goal. Inside give, fall to the five, and we go back to the punt. I told you I like Pat Chung. Watch him working on the outside here on the gunner, Anthony Madison. Don't think so. And it's not over when you hit the ground either. Three times he's down. Down goes Frazier. There you go. <laughs> Four times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's working on special teams. That is something else. Boy, the Patriots came to play tonight. Great work. Chung becoming noted for that. He was at Oregon. Tough player. Second and goal. And the pass is caught by Randy Moss in the end zone. Touchdown. Randy Moss is turning this one into to no Moss. <laughs> this is simple. This You've seen this one in this game before. Just go down the end zone and throw one up in the air to Randy Moss. Good luck trying to out jump him at six foot five. It has been a show by the stars of the Patriots tonight. All the way across the board, these guys have played great football. Welker and Moss and Brady and Falk. They have gotten it done in a big game. Stowski for the extra point. Those injuries have begun to take their toll on that indie defense, especially the secondary. The Colts had allowed only 10 passing touchdowns over their last 25 games. Tonight, Brady has thrown three. And it's a 17-point lead. Not too bad for the Redskins either who came up with a big win. 17-point Patriot lead. Chad Simpson, who was out with a, a head injury earlier on, his said his return was questionable, comes back in to run the kickback to the 21-yard line. There's Dallas Clark, who's been held to two catches. Well, Bill Belichick is known for taking away your best player. He must consider Dallas Clark to be the Colts' best player because it has been a nightmare tonight for Clark. He has been getting hit not by just one safety, by two, and just has been taken away. And Peyton Manning, to go back to a point that Tony Dungy made, has really stopped looking at him. You know, he just only thrown to him three times. He's just assumed that he won't be there. And those three catchers came early in the first quarter after Manning had thrown only six passes. And finally, well, almost on cue. Sooner or later, they've got to go back to him. And they do here for a first down of the 40, covered by McGowan. That's a gain of 19. Well, they always did listen to Tony Dungy, so. Here we go. Peyton Manning going to work now. He's got to crank it up. Covered by Bodden and out of bounds, but not until he picks up a first down. So quickly, they get to the Patriots 49-yard line. Pretty remarkable, really, when Peyton Manning sees a soft spot in the coverage. He finds it almost every time. One of the rare single high coverages that time by the Patriots. No, 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 Omaha, 59. Hurry, hurry, hurry. This is your obligatory Omaha call. A nice gain of nine yards tackled by Guyton. You know, this is what the Colts are going to have to do for the rest of this year. You know, they had gotten away from this running game, and I think that you have to acknowledge that to be the Super Bowl champion, you have to have a little balance. And you can see what it does when they start getting back to it. It opens other things up. Stay on the ground. Give it to Simpson. He looked really good on that one long drive in the first quarter, and he takes it to the 29-yard line. Oh, and you end up with only six people down in the box. 
you can double team both those tackles and just go right at them. First down from the 29 yard line. And Manning deep down the sideline and reaching forward is Marshall for the touchdown. Pierre Garçon, who's had a real good half season, but a spotty game tonight with a big, big catch and a 29-yard touchdown. Remember earlier in the game I told you Lee Bodden jumped that slant. I said, you will see a double move eventually. That one's called a sluggo, slant and go. And Peyton Manning put it in the memory bank and came back and cashed it in. Now Max Stover, 20th year in the league. Vinatieri is injured. They expect him back in a couple of weeks after arthroscopic knee surgery. Stover bangs it through. And a big Indianapolis answer. It only took him two minutes, four seconds to go 79 yards and make it a game again. 31-21. Monument Circle, Indianapolis. We're about six blocks from there right now. Ten-point game, and the kick is fielded by Matthew Slater in the back of the end zone. Back to the touchdown we go. Peyton Manning with a great job reading this. Right here, Pat Chung is going to come down. Man coverage right there. He sees the single high, and the slant and go on the outside is there. But you'll see the pump fake draws Chung down, but also holds the backside safety. Check out Peyton checking that backside safety, make sure he wasn't flying over the top. Complete quarterback play that time by Peyton Manning. as the Patriots start this drive from their own 20 yard line. And after the play fake, Welker bobbles, but recovers and to the 32 yard line. Almost a quintessential play right there, Chris. About a two yard pass and 10 yards after the catch. I tell you what, Tom Brady doesn't miss much either. They came on a slot blitz that time. Brady saw it all the way and he's just gonna raise up and hit Wes Welker right here. Whoops. <laughs> Not even two yards. He caught it at the line of scrimmage. First and ten from the 32. And Moroni, nice tackle right there in the middle. That's Gary Brackett stopping him in his tracks. No game. Second and ten. Well, you talk to Larry Coyer about Gary Brackett, and he says, this is the guy, if you're out playing on the playground, your first choice no matter what the sport is this is the guy he's the brains of the defense he's the guy I want on my team first now that might be my uh, <laughs> he might be first the bracket might be second right guard Stephen Neal is on the bench Dan Connolly 63 is in right now second down and 10 and again they run that same play again they just ran it and they run it again and Welker gets twisted back as he crosses the 35-yard line. It's going to set up a third and five. Nice play by Raheem Brock. He's sort of the, the joker, if you will, in that defense. He moves all over the place in that nickel. And now these fans know this is it. This is the play right here. to Moss. Moss covered by Tim Jennings. All he needed was five and Moss is able to get it for him. Winds up picking up eight first down at their own 45. As soon as they flank Kevin Falk out and you saw the linebacker walk out there with him. Tom Brady knew right now that it was man coverage. He took advantage came right to his playmaker and converted big first down. Randy Moss has eight catches tonight. Two touchdowns. 900 now for his career. Maroney turns a loss into a short gain 
broke out of a tackle would be tackle of Gerard Powers. So Moss eight years in Minnesota two year interlude at Oakland and now the 11th player with at least 900 catches in NFL history. And Wes Walker missed a couple of games earlier this year but when those two guys were on the field together nearly impossible to stop this offense. People wondered if Brady was slipping a little. It was just he was missing his tandem. Second down, eight. Four-man rush. And they get to Brady as he releases the ball. The ball is alive. Robert Mathis creates what for the moment would have been a fumble, but New England recovers it anyway as Copen winds up on top of the football at the 45-yard line. Robert Mathis has just had a monster game on the outside working against Nick Casier. Watch the athleticism to jump for the ball. Good golly. He is the master of that strip sack. Ooh, boy, yep. Got it out before the arm was coming forward, too, so Copen saving it for New England with the recovery. Third and ten. Ticking down to eight minutes left. Brady. And that may have been tipped as well. Got him again. Robert Mathis. Yes, 98. Sir. Fourth down. You go with the speed one time, then you come right back with the bull rush. A 245-pound guy just going to jam this big 300-pound tackle right back into Tom Brady, hook his arm, and Robert Mathis has just taken over here in the fourth quarter. What a series of downs by him. Kager gives up 70 pounds to oh. Mathis. T.J. rushing to run back the kick. This will be Hanson's fourth punt of the night. He's averaging 46 yards per boot. High kick. Fair catch called for. Made at the 18-yard line by Rushing. So here comes Manning about halfway through the fourth quarter. New England 31. Indianapolis 21. Look at that Manning, and we remember that game very, very well in 03. It was a Monday night game. Tony Dungy comes back to Tampa Bay. And Indianapolis with a tremendous comeback after about 90% of the crowd had gone home. 18-yard line, first down. Manning off the fake, going deep, and it is intercepted by Will Height at the 46-yard line. And Will Height will run it back to the 30-yard line. And Peyton Manning throwing a duck intended for Reggie Wayne and having it picked off. Reggie Wayne just did not anticipate whatever Peyton Manning saw. I think Peyton thought he was going to get a safety blitz and that Reggie Wayne was going to take his guy deep when he broke it off inside. He had no idea where that ball ended up. Right out here is where it's going to happen. But you could see that Peyton was checking. He saw the safety come down in the slot. Thought he was just going to get a single man coverage on the outside. Threw it up. And Reggie Wayne didn't see the same thing. We don't see those two guys get confused too often. Uh-uh. Manning two picks tonight. And seven on the season. Rolling to the 32-yard line. And here's Maloney. And New England can start to think about taking some time off the clock. Seven and a half to go in regulation. Well, now the significance of holding the Patriots to just a field goal here. You can keep it a two-score game at that point. Still, obviously, plenty of time when you have quarterbacks like this on the field. Let's see how aggressive the Patriots are going to be here. Second and nine. Brady taking the play clock down to five. And then that pass is caught by Isaiah Sandback. He's tackled three yards shy of the first down with less than seven minutes to play. Well, they end up rotating over the top here to Moss's side. So they just come back to the single receiver side. And Isaiah Sandback has definitely contributed to this ball game tonight. They've used him to chip on some of these pass rushers, but he's also caught the ball well. 
third down and a long yard. And that is Maroney who is able to pick up the first down to the 20 yard line. For what they hope would be eventual home field advantage in the playoffs. Ball is at the 20 yard line. And Brady milking the play clock and is caught by Moss. Bill Belichick said it very simply last night, the significance of this game. He told his team, hey, look, if we don't win, we have no chance to catch them. If we win, we're right on their blank. Well, it you is, fill in the blank. Yeah, it is a, uh, you know, this game is always a swing game, isn't it? I mean, when they get together and all the championships that have been won between these two teams, usually somewhere along the way, one team has to beat the other to get there to that championship game. Second down and six. And this is four. Look at this, Chris. It, home field advantage, and we can make too much of it. But it, I think it would be tougher for Indianapolis, the way they're constructed, to go outdoors in January, New England, and play maybe in the snow or whatever it's going to be, as opposed to New England coming here. Yeah, no question. And I think the major reason why is the Colts don't run the football very well. You know, perfect conditions is what they really need to compete against some of these upper level teams. Third and eight. This will be a big conversion in terms of continuing to take time off that clock. And Brady's under pressure and has to throw it incomplete. So it's fourth down, and they do limit them to a field goal attempt with 4.17 to play. And Indianapolis looking ahead with all of their timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Well, it's just been a sloppy game tonight for this Colts offense. We've seen Peyton miss some throws. We've seen miscommunication. We've seen drop passes. And you can't play a team of this caliber like that and win the football game. There's still time. There's still a chance for them to come back, but they've just made too many mistakes to this point. 36-yard attempt by Steven Gostowski. Hanson to put it down. And that will tack on three more and make it a 13-point lead. New England 34, Indianapolis 21. In jeopardy tonight because they're down by 13. And Stastowski's kick is taken by Chad Simpson. From the three-yard line, Simpson will bring it back to the 21-yard line. Four minutes, seven seconds left in the fourth quarter. 13-point Patriot lead. There's your quarterback comparison right now in a 13-point game. New England on top. Again, Indianapolis with all of its timeouts and the two-minute warning. Reggie Wayne in this game, eight catches, but only one in this half. So do they start to look his way again? He will split left, Garcon to the right. Manning will go over the middle, check it down to a dive. And that'll be a first down up at the 33-yard line, tackled there by Gerard Mayo. Peyton in the pocket again. And New England will give all of those that he wants, those little short passes over the middle, Austin Collie. Tackled by Darius Butler as we tick down to three and a half minutes to play. And Manning throws. It's a little underthrown, but Collie is able to come back and readjust and get it at the 45 yard line. And one of the reasons it was underthrown is Thomas. Planting Manning as he throws. Boy, Austin Collie with a nice route that time. It looked like it was going to be one of those middle reads right down the middle of the field. Broke out late and somehow Peyton timed it up. <laughs> Three minutes to play. Manning stepping up. Manning going deep and it's almost caught. Collie's there and he's going to get the flag. You've got Darius Butler, the rookie out of Connecticut, who was there, made contact, and draws the flag. Great play by Austin Collie right there. That's a veteran football play. The ball a little underthrown. 
Defense, number 28. Ball's placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Ball's a little underthrown, so Colley jumps back into the defender here, Darius Butler, and is going to get the call by jumping back into him. That's what drew the call. It wasn't the Butler did all that much, but it was Colley who made that play. And that penalty is worth 31 yards. And in less than a minute and a half, the Colts have moved the ball to the 13-yard line. Second and one, Butler makes the tackle. Moss shaking his head, 2.43 to go. If they're going to single up on Dallas Clark, stay with him. He is big enough to beat these corners just with body position alone. On second and one, Manning throwing a fade and throw that one out of the end zone. The coverage that time is good by Wilhite on Wayne, stopping the clock at 2.27. And it'll be third down and one. But despite the incompletion, Peyton keeps him at the line of scrimmage to keep the Patriots from substituting. Vegas. So they have to go with the same defensive personnel. They'll give the ball to a guy, and a guy will go into the end zone. Touchdown, Colts. And it takes Manning just 152 to lead them down the field, and he doesn't have to use a single timeout. So there's still 2.23 on the clock, and they can stop the clock three times plus the two-minute warning. The die's second touchdown of the night. One rushing, one receiving, and Matt Stover makes it a six-point game. Peyton Manning spread them out all over the field, and then big Vince Wilfork right here in the middle. They just double-team him and get him just enough. Trust me, it takes two guys to make this block. As you can see, Drod Mayo just got lost. He couldn't see over the top of the double-team and just couldn't find a die to make the play. But what a drive by the Colts. Dallas Clark is going to get the final seal block on the inside, drive his corner right back in. And the Colts, they don't want to see this streak in. Well, I don't think you onside kick here. That's one of the options. But with three clock stoppages and the two-minute warning, I think you just got to, you have to think your defense, or at least put it in their hands, as opposed to an onside kick. That's what I would do anyway. I, I, I agree with that because, remember, a field goal here in this situation would end up putting it at nine points. You're out of the game. Then you're out of the game. So right. you're better off letting your defense play. They are way up here, too. But that's a defense that's going to have to stop an offense that has gained 459 yards tonight. If you can drop it in deep and not have it go in the end zone like that bite, you, know, you don't want that in the end zone. But that's where he's put it. With just one guy back. See, that's a bad play. You yep. had Welker up there standing on about the 25. If you drop that in the corner, you back him up inside the 10, maybe. If you can. Of course, you run the risk of Welker running one back if you don't put it in the corner. And you save time on the clock. You say that, too. Yep. The clock doesn't didn't start at all on the touchback. So there's still 223 with all of their timeouts, the two-minute break, and then New England was set up in the 20-yard line. Let's see if they shift their help now over to Robert Mathis' side. He's the guy they haven't been able to block the last couple of series. This is the time in the game typically you see Dwight Freeney make a play or two. And Brady has to take a timeout. Boy, that's a very uncharacteristic timeout. And that's their second. They, they used one earlier. And, you know, you wonder if that's something that comes back and burns you later because if Indy gets the ball and they get a touchdown, now you're down to only one timeout. That's weird. I mean, to start a drive with a timeout. How good is this series, though, between these two teams? I mean, every time you see them take the field and 34-28 offensive touchdowns sprinting up and down the field, it's just 
It's one of the great series that the NFL has to offer. As we said at the beginning, most of these games have lived up to the hype. Winning team in each of the last three confrontations coming from behind. Only time the Colts had the lead tonight, it was early. It was seven to nothing. Then the Ravens scored 24 unanswered points. And right now it's a six-point game, and they start on the ground with Kevin Falk. And the Colts will take a timeout. Second down and ten. And that's the smart thing to do. You take your timeouts. On defense, you take them on this side of the two-minute warning. Numbers for the two guys. Well, Tom Brady's won the battle thus far, but if Peyton Manning gets his ball back, I'm not sure who's winning the war. Second and ten. Find Randy Moss and you'll find the answer. Moss or Walker, they're both going to Tom Brady's left. Moss outside. Jennings on him. Now Walker comes to the right side in the slot. You've got Watson slotted left. Fake the run. Go to the outside, and that's caught. And then Walker gets upended at the 27-yard line. And now a timeout again taken by Indianapolis with a gigantic third and two coming up. Well, that time when Wes Welker went in motion across the formation, Tom Brady saw he, all he needed to see. Nobody walked out there with him. You've got Clint Session basically trying to cover one of the best slot receivers in the game. Forget that, one of the best, the best slot receiver in the game. And Brady goes right to him. This combination of Randy Moss and Wes Welker, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, Randy Moss with the most touchdowns during the course of the time that he's been in New England, and Wes Welker with the most catches in the league during that time he's been with New England. So here is a huge play. Third and two. Colts have one timeout. Two-minute warning is imminent. 11. Then Jarvis Green Ellis is the back. Brady comes up in the shotgun. Cole Stanson at the line. Here they come. Pass, Pass incomplete. Gerard Powers on a blitz came in and forced it. I think it surprised Tom Brady. The Colts don't blitz very much at all. But when they do come, it is effective. Had to get it out here, and we talked about this kid, Rod Powers. He almost had the game winner right there. Almost came away with this thing, and he might have scored. Powers and New England at least lining up as if they're going to go for it. I can't believe that, though. They're going to take a timeout. They're going to take a timeout. New England is before a fourth down and two. So Powers with the coverage. Pressure was put on that time to force Brady's pass with 208 and almost an interception. Wow. He catches that and he scores. That young man's put on a great show tonight. He really is. If they go for this, I am going to be absolutely stunned. I should never be stunned by Bill Belichick. Maybe he just feels like his defense is too gassed and they can't match up with Peyton Manning at this point. He saw how quickly they went down the field. He's going for the win right here. I'm stunned times five if he does. Fourth and two. With nothing else trying to draw Indianapolis offside. And they really do go for it. And do they make it? Yes, the catch is made. And where is the spot going to be? Kevin Falk is there. The catch is made. Here's what happened. Kevin Falk was bobbling the ball. So instead of getting forward progress, they forked him down where he actually landed on the ground. Absolutely. Because you, they're going to measure it anyway, but they're going to be short. Now, this happens on the front side of the two-minute warning. So if Belichick wants to challenge this, he can. We're not to the booth review yet. But as Chris said, the key thing here, when do you have possession of it? Juggle, juggle, get caught by Bullitt. 
And that's where Scott Green marks it. Doesn't have it, doesn't have it. Now has it. And he goes down. This is the two minute warning. Close. Please reset the clock for two minutes. It's the two minute warning, but again, Belichick can challenge this since it happened on the other side of the two minute warning. What a fantastic finish coming up in Indianapolis. We're back. Belichick cannot challenge that. Remember, he took two timeouts on this drive. One before they started the first down play. The other one, they determined what they were going to do on fourth down. So there's no challenge. It's juggled. It's juggled. It's spotted. It would have been extremely close. But there's no way they can challenge it. And since it happened on the front side of the two-minute warning, there's no booth review. Instead, Indianapolis takes over at the 29-yard line. And we talked about those timeouts and how it could come back to kill him. Now we'll find out. The ball is at the 29. Manning will throw it. Manning will throw it complete to Wayne at the 14-yard line. Now I think you want to huddle up here. You do not want to leave any time for Tom Brady on the back end of it, and that's exactly what they're doing. Yep. Going back in the huddle here and allowing this clock to run. This is all or nothing, obviously, at this point. If they need it, Indianapolis has one timeout. Patriots out of timeouts. I think there'll be a few things to talk about after this game. Okay. Holy mackerel. To the touchdown play again. They're just taking the big defensive lineman right here with a double team. Vince Wilfork, one of the most powerful guys in the league. But we talked about the lack of depth. These guys are wearing down now for New England. 45 seconds from the one. Second and goal, under a half minute. Colts still have that one timeout. Now you need to pick it up. Manning for the end zone. Wayne, touchdown. Colts to lead Stover. Veteran football players like Reggie Wayne remain patient in clutch situations. He set up Will Height with a hard outside move. Did not rush that. The patience of that route is what won the day. And for Bill Belichick, this will be a decision they discuss for a long, 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 long time. And what is so stunning is that not only is Belichick a great coach, but through the years we've seen him so many times, their clock management is normally very good. Their strategy is very good. They make so many right decisions, and this was just stunning. Not only to go for it on fourth down as the play is replayed right here, but to waste those two timeouts on the front side and leave yourself nothing at the end. I know Peyton Manning's good. But to leave the ball on a fourth down at the 30-yard line, or at least have the possibility of that happening, to me is outrageous. Two-yard 
Slides into the end zone. Slater. And that kind of puts a coda on what just happened in New England. Speaking of coda, that's Cody Glenn who plants him with nine seconds. Post game show coming up. I want to hear what Tony's got to say about this. And Bob Mosher will be talking to him. Rodney as well. Andrea with an interview down on the field. Where do you begin out of to, to tell the story of this one? Out of all the great moments this defense has had in New England, that Bill Belichick didn't trust him with that lead in that situation is unprecedented. So the nine ticks away from an 18th straight regular season win. Brady throws over the middle. This is Walker. He just has to get rid of the ball and try to keep it alive. And the clock runs out. That's as quick as it gets. Belichick is stunned. Caldwell is 9-0. The Colts have won 18 in a row. The Colts in New Orleans is the only undefeated team's first loss for Bill, regular or post, when leading by 13 or more in the fourth quarter, and that would encompass 88 games. Brady can't believe it. Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut can't believe it. There are going to be some people who turned in early tonight that aren't going to believe it when they wake up tomorrow either. Wow. Give them credit. Peyton Manning with about four and a half minutes to go had to have two touchdowns. Got a little help from Bill Belichick, but they delivered. And Reggie Wayne, the patience of the veteran, Working against Jonathan Wilhite, the youngster. Wow. 35-34, Indianapolis. In a game that lives up to all expectations. Wendy's post-game report, Bob Costas hosting from here. We'll hear from Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison on the other side of the break.